Good afternoon. Please silence your cell phones and rise to welcome the class of 2019 and the faculty.
please be seated and welcome President Carol Mason. And they got my stool. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, right. I was going to say, we're here to celebrate. Uh, yes, indeedy. Uh, so welcome, everyone, to the fifth annual graduate hooding ceremony at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Let's give a round of applause for our students. And so I especially want to thank the family and friends who are here to support our graduates. Can you stand up so we can thank you? Yeah. I just want to thank you all for trusting your students with us and for being here to celebrate this really happy day. And the sun came out for you all. It was raining this morning, but they knew you were graduate being hooded today, and the sun just had to come out. Um, and I want to thank our speaker today, Lorraine Cortez Vasquez, who is the CUNY trustee and the New York City commissioner and the former New York State Secretary of State for serving as our keynote speaker today. She's got a tough job with the current Secretary of State in the audience. Um, every student with us today has gone on an educational journey, a journey to acquire a level of expertise that can change minds, change communities, and even change the world. And I hope that this journey of learning won't be over after the hooding ceremony. Is that a promise? Yeah, because every one of you must continue to learn and must be lifelong learners. That's where the hope is. Because no matter what age you are, no matter what degrees you obtain or what rank you reach, there's always, always more to learn. And this is my sophomore year at John Jay, and I am still learning, as you will see. To help illustrate this point, I'd like to share a story about one of your fellow graduates today, one of your fellow 2019 Hooding graduates. She is receiving her master's degree in criminal justice and she's putting her head down, but that won't stop me from saying what I'm gonna say, so. I am talking about our New York Secretary of State, Rosanna Rosado, who has been part of the John Jay family for quite a while and I might tear up about this. She's taught classes at John Jay as a distinguished lecturer She's been on our foundation board of trustees and a counselor and advisor to me. There are many Sundays when I'm walking down the street with Rosanna on the phone giving me advice about handle, how to handle things. Um, and she's even a Latin American Latinx Studies Fellow Program that is named after her, the Rosanna Rosado Fellows Program. And, but you know, with all of those accolades, that wasn't enough for Rosanna. So 35 years after receiving her bachelor's degree, did you guys hear that? 30, and she probably wants me to not say that number again. <laughs> but 34 years after she received her bachelor's degree in journalism, Secretary Rosado enrolled in our online master's degree program in criminal justice. And just like all of our students here today, that meant late nights of studying. Is that, did you guys stay up a lot studying at night? Yeah, this is interactive. I want to see if you're paying attention and listening. Uh, missing out on social activities? Yeah. Um, some of you may have been able to juggle both um, because she had to write papers and understanding what it meant to be that this wasn't about her position in life and what she'd achieved, but it's about what she needed to put into her classes to really earn the degree. For Secretary of State Rosado, this journey meant diving deep into her field, learning more about research and, lang and the language of criminal justice system and finding on her own ways to contribute to it and I've witnessed personally how she's woven all of that into her role of Secretary of State. She is redefining the role of Secretary of State and bringing her criminal justice expertise into that field as well. She's the perfect example of who a John Jay student is. Our students are committed to learning, they're committed to justice, and you're committed to public service. This class sitting before me represents some of the best minds in our country. Did you hear that? You represent the best of us. And when it comes to issues of justice, no matter what your degree is, you're all steeped in the notion of justice. You are our best hope, our best future, and we're excited about what you're going to do. With your knowledge and expertise, you can help conquer 
all the injustices that our nation faces, replacing them with fairer policies and practice. It's my hope that the class sitting before us today helps bring people in this country closer together. That's what we desperately need. Look at the diversity of this class, not just in terms of the degrees they're receiving, but the, their backgrounds, their perspectives. It's you all that will help steer this country to a place where we all want it to be, one that preserves the ideals on which this country was founded. You know that our motto is educating fierce advocates for justice, and to reach that goal where everyone is treated fairly and humanely in this country, regardless of their income, race, religion, sexual orientation. We need to be fierce. We need to stand up for what's right. We need to express constructive outrage. Notice I said constructive outrage when unjust circumstances prevail over just ones. Because at the end of the day, standing up for equality and fairness isn't an act of charity or kindness. It's an act of patriotism. So the class of 2019, I commend you for reaching this milestone in your life and I look forward to watching your continued success. Thank you very much. And now please join me in welcoming. So, you know the phrase is usually your partner in crime, but this is my partner in justice, Provost Yi Lee. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, thank you. This is the only fifth time in Jiangjie's 55-year history that we have had a graduate holding ceremony. I'm so pleased to be here tonight to celebrate the mastery you have all achieved in your studies. Holding ceremonies are carried out by institutions of higher education to recognize students who have earned an advanced degree beyond the baccalaureate degree. This ceremony is a time when individual program can recognize the accomplishment of their graduates in a more personal way than is permissible at the university general commencement. During the ceremony, each graduate come forward and have their hood placed over their heads by the program director. As their name are read, the hood is a special part of academic regalia and denotes scholarly and professional achievements. The origin of academic dress dates back to the 12th and the 13th century. When university were rising at the time to prominence, the hood that forms part of today's academic dress was originally a head covering for bad weather. Imagine that, now we're indoor. Later, it was dropped to the shoulders in the form of a small cape. Eventually, the hood became a separate piece of a pill bearing even more symbolism than the gown. Today, hoods are the most expressive components of academic costume. They serve to communicate the student school, degree, field of study through their lens and the colors of leaning and binding. Today's hood have evolved from a serviceable article of clothing to a type of elongated scarf draped over the shoulders and displayed down the back with the leaning turned inside out. Jiangjie's master degree graduates and the candidates receive their hood because of the level of education you uh, have per pursued beyond the baccalaureate degree. Jiangjie College's color are blue and gold. Hence, these colors on the hood and velvet trimming on the hood signifies the scholar's field. So now, 
It is my honor to introduce the Honorable Lorraine Cortez Vasquez, who serves as New York State 65th Secretary of State and was the first Hispanic appointee to serve in that role. Ms. Cortez Vasquez also has a distinguished career in the nonprofit, government, and the corporate sectors that extended over 30 years. <laughs> and she started when she was five. <laughs> Most recently, in April 2019, New York City Mayor Bill de la Pesciu appointed her commissioner to the Department for the Aging where she will work to advance the department mission to eliminate ageness, ensure the dignity and the quality of life of elder adults and the support caregiving. Commissioner Cortez Vasquez was a mover and a shaker in both the corporate and nonprofit world. She was Senior Vice President of Corporate Relationship and the Government Affairs at Amblin Health, where she was responsible for Amblin Health's relationships with the key government, community, and the industry stakeholders. Better positioning Amblin Health for new growth opportunities. She was the Executive Vice President for Multicultural Marketing and Engagement at the American Association of Retired Persons, namely AARP, where she developed a comprehensive five-year strategic plan and worked to ensure that the interest of multicultural age 50 plus audience were integrated into everything AARP does. She serves as Vice President of Government and Public Affairs at Cablevision Systems Corporation, a leading media, entertainment, and telecommunication company. She serves as President of the Hispanic Federation, a non-for-profit network of Latino health and human service agencies with a footprint throughout the East Coast. She serves as the executive director of Aspera of New York, the nation's oldest and the largest non-for-profit Latino youth leadership development and education advocacy agency. Lorraine Cortez Vasquez earned a master degree from New York University Robert F. Wagner Graduate School of public service. And I'm proud to say she is a part of CUNY family in that she obtained her baccalaureate and graduate degree from Hunter College. So please help we, please help we welcome CUNY alumni, Commissioner Lorraine Cortez Vasquez. Let's, first of all, it was great walking down that aisle and looking at all those caps. You are amazing. Your artistic talents, your expression is something to be proud of. So I'm glad I got to see that from behind. Today's a great honor for me, not only as a CUNY trustee or a CUNY alumni, as I, you've just know, known, um, but amongst you is a, one of my favorite people in the world. I just got emotional about that. Um, and it's great when you see individuals, and I'm gonna describe um, a little bit about who she is. But when you see individuals who no matter where they go, they make a mark, the place is never the same once they move on. Everyone is richer because of their participation and presence. 
And amongst the, uh, that person is one of your graduates, none other than Secretary of State Rosana Rosado. When I knew that Rosana was going to graduate, I figured out, I said, I've got to insinuate myself into that process and that program somehow. And lo and behold, you have a hooding ceremony. Uh, so I'm really honored to be here. I was the first Secretary of State, but there is no honor in being the first. The only honor comes in being the first if you create a pathway so that you are not the first, but that many, many, many follow you. And Rosana, it is my great honor that you are the Secretary of State. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about who we are and the challenges that we have before us. These are the strangest of times. Every time I turn on the news, I start finding a new low. And that new low really debunks everything that you and I and many in this room and many outside this room have learned about leadership, about integrity, about the Constitution, about freedom. And it's just astonishing. Every time I think we hit rock bottom, I find like, oh, we can go a little lower than that. And the only thing that I'm going to say is that, that those are models that none of us are ever to follow. Those are models for each one of us and every one of you now in your graduate studies to challenge. We have to stand up because the only thing that is going to get us back to an even keel is our voices and our action. Because we can think, we can debate, we can have dining room conversations, and none of that will make a difference. What's going to make a difference is how we apply ourselves and how we make a commitment to getting back to the old normal before we can start on new frontiers, because I think we've been set back. As a grandmother, I'm concerned every day about us escalating and, and joining war. And that is something that no one, I lived, I was a generation of, of Vietnam. I don't think any mother, child, or individual should be worried about that and have that ever present in their mind. So I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna tell you three thi four things that I live by. And I learned these from the young woman who's getting her degree today. When I start thinking, I was laughing when he was introducing me, my mother would say, the girl can't keep a job. Uh, <laughs> but when I start thinking about the steps I've taken and the missteps I've done, I've learned probably more from the missteps. And I've probably grown from the missteps. And so that I'm going to tell you that my many missteps is what brought me here today. But I can pinpoint a few moments in my life where those setbacks fueled my success and cemented four simple core beliefs. These are not unique, but I do know that they are the core of everything I am. The first one is be your word. If you say it, mean it. If you're gonna do it, do it. If you say you're gonna do it, absolutely show up. It will be, you will be distinguished for someone and respected by someone who is your word. We've seen lately how easy it is to treat your word as, as if it's invaluable. And you see the kind of lack of respect that that does for you and for others. So be your word. Do no harm. That doesn't mean being a pushover. Rosana is not a pushover. I'm not a pushover. And as Latinos, we've lived in a world of Ibendito, and we're tired of it. <laughs> but it is a deliberate decision to never willfully hurt or do damage. Because you know the old adage, karma is, karma is a bitch. One of the other ones is to find the cream in every individual. For too long, many of us and many of you graduates have been judged 
by either your last name, the way you look, the way you stand, the way you spell your name, the way you sound. None of really is, those are just traits that you have. They don't really define who you are. Because the biggest challenge for all of us, particularly institutions, is to find the best in folks. It gets easier and easier every time that you remember, there could be me. So just remember that as you want to be treated, so does everyone else. And the last one is to take action. Remember, they are, there's cause and effect in the world. So for every action, there's going to be a reaction. Take a stand and take that action. But without action, all your desires and dreams are exactly that, dreams. A plan without an implementation strategy is a wish. You cannot live in a space of wish, wishes. We are now in a, in a time where we have to be in a space of action. I'm going to tell you that Rosanna is someone who has always taken action. She's a Bronx girl, very much a boogie down Bronx girl. Absolutely. She made a commitment to her community early on. So everything that I talk about, those core values, those are Rosanna. She has committed herself. And the thing that makes me the proudest is that not only did she decide to give up a career, a very, very lucrative career in publishing, she was really respected, feared in this city, and she gave that up because she had a commitment. And she had a commitment to the incarcerated and wanted to devote herself to criminal justice reform. And right now, we are very proud in this city because of her efforts that we have had some of the strongest and most advanced criminal justice reforms. So, Rosanna, we thank you for that. But not, that wasn't good enough for her. So then she decided to join John Jay as a faculty member, or what, what, it, what was it, what is it called, a distinguished professor. To, um, to, to encourage others in this whole arena called criminal justice reform. And she did that great. But she knew that the power was going to be when she could advance her own education. So here she was after this illustrious career, decided to stop being a professor, take a little job as Secretary of State, and then also try to uh, study for her master's. So she is an example of what each one of us needs to do in our life. Never give up. As a representative of the Department for the Aging, it is never too old to begin again. My mother got her BA at 84. And um, there's a whole story about how she deceived us for years about it. But you, there, is, there is nothing that you can't do. And age is just a factor, just as our names are, just as our backgrounds are. Those are just factors. We can choose to be those things, or we can choose to defy those things and stretch. But right now, I'm asking each and every one of you to take action. And whatever that action is, get on those streets. The other day, we had a wonderful march. Uh, taking some action against some policies that we thought were unfair that being being proposed by other states. But I'm asking you, and the powerful thing that we have, if you don't have money, where you can help promote candidates, you have the most important thing, which is your vote. So I ask each and every one of you to vote. Not only for you to vote, but to make sure that your siblings, your cousins, your best friend also votes because we need to take back this country and make this country the country that we all believe in, not a country that's having six-year-old children die under its watch, not a country that is separating families, not a country that is putting us at war and at risk of nuclear um, disaster. And I know that that's such a cheery note on this fabulous graduation. But these are times for us to enjoy, enjoy our family and our love. But these are very serious times. And it really requires us to be serious. 
con eso le digo, Dios lo bendiga. Thank you so much, Commissioner. At this time, as the Dean of Graduate Studies, we have a seat for you up here. As the Dean of Graduate Studies, I would now like to recognize our Graduate Academic Awards recipients. So please stand at your seats when your name is called, and please hold your applause until um, all names are called. The Claude Hawley Award, established in memory of Claude Hawley, the first vice president of John Jay. This award is given to the student with the best master's thesis and scholarly scholastic distinction in the criminal justice program. And this year, the recipients are Julia Paginamenta and Robert Ryan. Are they standing? The International Crime and Justice MA Excellence Award. This award is given to the graduate students in ICJ with the highest GPA in, in ICJ. And this year it's going to Danya Babu and Jessica Lettieri. The Robert S. Murrow Prize. The Department of Psychology established this award in memory of Professor Robert Murrow, the first coordinator of the master's program in forensic psychology. The award is given to one or more graduating uh, students who have demonstrated academic excellence in the forensic psychology program. And this year, the recipients are Laura Cheatham, Sneha Gupta, Rachel Lazar, Melanie Ramat Ram Ramutar, and Melissa Zola. Congratulations to all of our award winners. It is now my privilege and honor to present our master's degree graduates and candidates with their hoods. Program directors will hood each candidate in their field of study. Please hold your applause until all graduates from each program are called. We will begin with graduates from the Department of Criminal Justice, who will be hooded by the director of the program, Professor Jeff Mello. So we'd like to ask the students from the criminal justice program to please rise, come to this end of the stage, and come up one by one. Rosanna Rosado. Cassandra Loom. Minling Chen. Michael Allen Jones, Jr. Jade Ruiz. Julia Pagnamenta. <laughs> Mo
Mark Persaud. Michelle Barragan. Raphael Sholomov. David Howard Rottenberg. Courtney Laquelle Parker. Samantha Lynn Santos. Monica Vega. Brianna Posada. Victoria Regensberger. Natisha Hazel. Bararesi Rodriguez. Jill Frometa. Allison Santiago. <laughs> Ekaterina Lee. <laughs> Isabella Prusajic. Amy Pinkney. Alexander Santiago. Katie Serrano. Judith Eisenberg. <laughs> Justice Danielle Evans. Danasia Brown. <laughs> Jamie Bingham. Okay. 
Megan Farrell. Jennifer Garcia. Tanya Haynes. Nelson Guillaume. Daniela Rice. Elijah William Font. Wanda Bardera. Amanda Dukaram. Arminio Corriado. Patrice McKinnon. Joan Vargas. Leah Bell. Shiraz Bakaru. Jendra Mokwana. Carolyn Thomas. Alexis Ferrero. Rahel Araya. Cindy Scavella. Francisca Vargas. Congratulations to the Masters of Criminal Justice. I would now like to present candidates from the International Crime and Justice Department uh, program, being hooded by Dr. Gohar Petrosian.
Angelica de Emilio. Angelica de Emilio. <laughs> Jessica Latiri. Angelique Henry. <laughs> Julie Park. <laughs> Melina Ponta. Fortune Armstrong. <laughs> Jesenia de Jesus. Anthony Avevor. <laughs> Nadia Hanari. <laughs> Vanessa Gutierrez. Alina Juna Saliva. <laughs> Danya Babu. Congratulations to the International Crime and Justice students. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Chicha Raghavan to the stage, who will present the hooding of graduates in forensic mental health counseling. Lisa Michelle Bellamy. Andrea Nicole Reddy. <laughs> Christina Eugenio. <laughs> Will Marie Feliz. Ruthie Jayashankar. <laughs> Courtney Brissy. <laughs> Leslie Unger. Ashley Rodriguez. Yay! 
Sarah K. Drazen. <laughs> Victoria Plisenko. Paige Carson. Christine Brown. Charlotte Berger. Jennifer Cohen. Congratulations to the Masters in Forensic Mental Health Counseling. And finally, I will now ask Dr. Michelle Galietta to join us as we hood graduates from the Department of Forensic Psychology. Christopher Losak. Rachel Lazar. Priya Reggie. Sandeep Chowdhury. Elvita Velik. Paulina Malinowska. Melanie Ramatar. Eliana Bihar. Oset Alexander. Nasha Strang. <laughs> Athena Shar. <laughs> Casey Bonacore. Lauren Joan Stepinski. <laughs> Emma Reedley. <laughs> Lily 
Alpers. Cordelia Chu. Crystal Ortiz. <laughs> Hannah Sampson. <laughs> Megan Lay. Megan Manginelli. Erica Marie Nelson. Samantha Mowbray. Emily Salo. Amanda Lynn Bart. Selena Marie Hart. Anne Crosby. Jasmine Basabe. Jalen Bugs. Kerry Reyes. Yeah. Elena Borovskis. Yeah. Samantha Kozilik. Yeah. Elena Christoffi. Yeah. Tatiana Aviles Seidel. Raquel Ortega Amenguel. <laughs> Stephanie Batances. <laughs> Roseanne Labretti. Neha Gupta. J. 
Janet Peterson. Lucretia Roselli. <laughs> Esther Kim. Congratulations to the Masters in Forensic Psychology program. So, graduating, graduating master's candidates, you are all now officially hooded and ready to, pro, to, pro, to process on graduation day wearing the historic regalia of your chosen degree programs. Congratulations to you all. I, I would now like to invite President Mason back to the stage to close out the ceremony. So would the graduates please stand and thank your faculty members who helped you get here today. You can sit now. I forgot that you all wait to be told to sit. <laughs> thank you. Um, but thank you all. We are so happy to see you all and I'm so happy that and I know that my tears here are shared by all of the faculty who are up here who are so happy to see your wonderful, wonderful achievement. So the class of 2019, we are extremely proud of you. Never forget that you are bloodhounds. You got that? Are you bloodhounds? Yes. Stay connected to John Jay. You are powerful alumni and we need your voices here as well as out in the world, inspiring the students coming from behind you. So please, um, families, join us in celebrating in the receptions following this. But let's give this wonderful group of new leaders a round of, another round of applause.